So hi, everybody. I'm Nick, uh, and I'm the CEO of EV Energy. Um, so EV Energy is a software platform that manages electric vehicle charging. So we think charging is the most challenging aspect of owning an electric vehicle, and we help to make electric vehicle charging as simple as possible for end users, as green as possible by aligning charging with the availability of renewable energy, and as cheap as possible. This is Christian. I'm the CEO of Hubject, and as Hubject, we are operating a digital marketplace for companies active in the EV space. What does it mean? We are trying to bring all the relevant parties together on our digital marketplace so that they can establish a proper customer charging experience because we believe that this is one of the key challenges we are facing in the market, that it's not that easy to recharge your vehicle all over your country, all over your city, all over your region. And we want to make this happen. And therefore, we are operating this marketplace, also called e-roaming platform, which is bringing all the companies together on a, on, a, on a digital level so that they can easily establish a collaboration with each other. From my point of view, we see that different triggers are now being in place to really, really create this, this huge explosion of the market. Of course, one trigger, and, and I think we need to, to bring this to, to the light, is definitely that there are um, more and more regulations on the carbon emissions, uh, not only in Europe, but also in other countries like, like uh, California, of course, is pushing on this. And I think this also is somehow needed not uh, to, to have a negative impact on, on the car manufacturers, but to really have a kind of joint target picture in place. What do we want to reach as a society? And I think reducing the carbon emissions in general is one of the most important challenges we are facing. And therefore, having a clear target picture in place from the, from the governments, from the political organizations is really, really helpful. Of course, uh, the goals we have now in place are, I would say, kind of demanding, but we also have seen that, especially in the last two years, most of the car manufacturers have found proper solutions how to fulfill them, so that we are now seeing really a huge lift up in regards of available EV models, for example. Um, all, all international OEMs have now announced that they definitely will include a lot of EV-based models in their portfolio. Um, a lot of car manufacturers have already announced that they are stopping producing ICE vehicles in the future and switching completely to emission-free vehicles, which I think is great. And that's, of course, really pushing the market forward. In addition, I think uh, facing a big crisis on a global level, we also have seen that a lot of people have changed their behavior in the way how they are using resources. I think this topic is also becoming more and more relevant. And that's, of course, also changing the perspective of a lot of uh, drivers, um, asking themselves, how do they need to drive, how much pollution they need to create. And that is, of course, also another trigger why we now really see a big explosion in regards of not only available car models, but also really in regards of the take rate. And last but not least, we also have seen that a lot of governments um, have issued have launched new subsidies last year during the crisis to still stimulate the economy, um, not only the German market, but as well as the French market, the British market, other markets as well. And that is, of course, also helping to increase the acceptance by having a better pricing in place for electric vehicles, which are today still a bit more expensive and a bit more complicated. But if we can reduce uh, the pricing of electric vehicles, that, of course, is increasing than the attractiveness uh, to buy or lease such a car. I think fundamentally, though, from an end customer perspective, end customers just love uh, driving electric vehicles. They get super excited about buying an electric vehicle because it's green, it's um, quiet, it's super fast, it often has loads of uh, whizzy tech inside, inside the car. And so what we uh, what we are about is overcoming one of the key challenges that will remain with electric vehicles um, as we roll them out over the next decade, and that's associated with charging electric vehicles. So charging is challenging. Charging is challenging in the home, and it's also challenging away from home. So in the home, what EV Energy offers is a solution where we have we have now 16,000 uh, app users on our platform who smart charge with us on a regular basis, and what that gives customers is access to greener energy that's aligned with when the grid needs it um, and when renewable energy is available on the grid. 
It's also cheaper by ensuring that it's aligned with when customers um, have access to lower rates or by participating in services to provide uh, services to the grid. Um, and it's hopefully a simpler way of, of charging an electric vehicle. It is daunting when you buy an electric vehicle to think that you have to recharge it every day. It's a different way of operating. Um, instead of going to the petrol station, you now have to come home, plug in your vehicle overnight. Um, but what we're trying to do is uh, make that process as simple as possible for end customers. Um, and I mean, fundamentally, I really, I own, uh, I own two electric vehicles um and i think they're just a delight to drive and they are just better than uh, owning an internal combustion engine vehicle so i'm very optimistic about the uh the road ahead and i'm very optimistic that consumers will be driving that road ahead and the decarbonization of transport we truly believe in collaboration in fact as in subject has started its activities in 2012 we were focused a lot on, on on setting up a kind of level playing field where all kind of companies can easily collaborate with each other because uh, as subject we believe that the that a successful ev market will consist not only of of big companies uh, but also of a lot of startup companies medium-sized companies from different industries we see right now that a lot of let's say unusual companies for the ev industry are joining the market like uh, retailers for example a lot of uh, supermarkets retailers are installing charging stations in front of their um, stores um, not only to 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 have charging stations there but also to really to start changing into a more renewable ecosystem we all know that right now we are focused a lot on passenger vehicles but we will soon seen that also electric trucks will cruising around and then, of course, we need to we need to see how we can integrate them easily as well. And therefore, we believe that collaboration is one of the key success factors. And as mentioned, we especially believe uh, in, in the fact that we need to have a kind of equal collaboration place where it's maybe not that much relevant how big you are or how big your budgets are, but still every company should have a fair chance, a fair opportunity to do business with each other. Um, and that's exactly what we are trying to push. Um, based on our business model called e-roaming, that every company can can find its spot, so to say, and collaborate with each other. And remembering the early days in 2012 and 2013, of course, this idea of bringing everyone together on a on a on a digital marketplace was not the let's say the easiest uh, business uh, we, we had there then, because of course a lot of companies have stated to us, "Hey guys." I've now invested millions of euros into charging infrastructure. Why should I now start sharing it with other companies? They should do the investments by themselves. Um, and this took us some time to really convince the majority of the market that this is in the end a better approach because as mentioned already, in the end, we only see a healthy and stable um, EV market in place if we are reducing the barriers for companies to work with each other, if we are reducing the barriers for end customers, for EV drivers using all private and public charging stations around them as easily as possible and as convenient as possible. And that's exactly what, what we are trying to push for. And seeing now that we have more than 800 companies in our marketplace already collaborating, I think we have achieved at least a, a, a small um, uh, result already but of course as mentioned this is just the starting point of uh, the market is now really really lifting up and of course there will be hundreds and maybe even thousands of more companies entering the market and we are convinced that then working with Hubtrade is definitely helping them as well because then they can relatively soon catch up with the existing players and can either, either share their own charging networks with others or can give access to their EV drivers to other charging networks because in the end we also need to discuss um, how business models can work and, and not only from a technical perspective but also really from a yeah from a business perspective therefore utilization is one of the most relevant success factors and we know in some spots in some locations the utilization is already quite high but uh, in general of course we see that uh, the utilization of charging stations on average let's say there's room for improvement um, and therefore, we think that this is definitely a very important approach that all charging networks, again, are easy to access by the concept of roaming.
So through the collaboration with, with Hubject, what we're trying to do really is to manage and simplify the process of uh, getting access to and paying for all types of, uh, of charging. So I don't think our customers, they don't think about it in terms of like home charging or roaming charging. They just want a service that they can access um, that gives them charging um, across anywhere. Um, and they want it to be super simple, super straightforward. And so as a business, we're focused quite squarely on the home right now. We work with energy utilities and other customers um, to, to deliver that service. Um, but we're routinely being asked about how we can extend that service to deliver a, a simple and seamless uh, process across both home and away from home. And I think through the collaboration that we've got with Hubjects, what we can do now is we can actually provide a service to end customers that will give them access to Hubjects network of 250,000 away from home electric vehicle charging points and um, enable that through one, uh, one simple service provider that's maybe integrated with your energy company or elsewhere. Um, so fundamentally, our new, the collaboration will enable us to launch that style of service. So for example, that could mean that customers could be able to earn rewards on certain networks, just like they do in the home with EV Energy, uh, potentially even paying for their energy away from home back onto their home energy bill so that they don't have multiple cards and payment services um, to deliver the same, uh, to deliver basically a simple transaction um, when they're out and about. Um, I also think that the collaboration for us is really exciting with Hubject because we were both playing in similar spaces within the e-mobility ecosystem. We're both service providers to utilities, to car OEMs, and we have there's a big synergy there between uh, common clients that we have um, have in the marketplace. So I'm super excited about what we can do together, both for our users and also for uh, the growth of both of our businesses. So in regards on how the future may look like, I think it's important to mention that all uh, involved industries, or at least the main, mainly involved industries, the car manufacturers, the energy companies, but also the oil and gas companies, they are facing one big challenge right now. And the challenge is that all their business models become smaller and smaller in the future, because there's one thing for sure, we will use less oil in the future. We also will use less electricity during the ongoing energy efficiency discussions. And also we all know that people have the tendency to buy less vehicles. Um, so therefore, all three industries are facing yeah, the, 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 the challenge that they, that they have a decreasing uh, business model in place. And therefore, of course, I think mm -hmm. focusing on electric vehicles is definitely giving them an opportunity to extend their business model again, because we know that, for example, if you're recharging your electric vehicle at home, that this easily increases the consumption to the same level like a normal household is already consuming all over the year. Um, we also know that oil and gas companies have started to replace their yeah, oil and gas core business models with um, energy related business models, which I think is also really, really important. Uh, and last but not least, the same for the car manufacturers who are also now focusing on other business models than just selling vehicles, uh, ICEs or EVs. They are now leasing it and sharing it and whatever else you can you can think about. And I think that's a great opportunity. So therefore, I think we are just starting something great. Uh, so the next one, two years will definitely will show us a lot of new, interesting approaches. And I think we need to work jointly on, on really make this happen, make this change happen. And therefore, I really appreciate the collaboration with Nick and his team. I think that's a great example how well companies can collaborate to each other uh, and support each other in a way that it's boosting bo both businesses not only in the business of one company. So that's really great. And, and we hope that we not only can intensify our, our collaboration, but also, of course, can set up additional collaborations with other companies in the market. I agree with a lot of those points. I think the world, I think it's important to remember what we're trying to achieve. I think the world is going through an energy crisis. This is like a fundamental challenge that we need to all lean into it will create massive disruption to business models. But I agree with Christian that there's lots of opportunities as well that are being created. I think in particular in the utility industry, in the electric utility industry, this is a, it's a, gonna be a massive shift in the way that we consume um, energy, uh, moving away from petrol and diesel at the pump 
to using electricity in the home and away from home. Um, and if we can meet that challenge and we can deliver that, then we can decarbonize transport. And I believe we can do it pretty rapidly. I mean, some governments have already set strong targets where by 2030, the sale of petrol and diesel will be banned. I believe uh, car manufacturers are also setting similar, similar targets for themselves. It's a huge, it's a huge transformation that's going to happen, but there is a huge opportunity that if we get it right, we can, it can lead to a better world where we can be driving greener, quieter, faster, more uh, tech-fueled vehicles that are quite exciting uh, and fun to drive. So I think the the next time will be will be um, shown to us in a way that we we will definitely see yeah ongoing collaboration we have mentioned it several times already but I think we also will see more specific collaborations um, again I think this collaboration with Nick and his team is a great example but also additional collaborations with the market will happen quite soon to bring the best of the different worlds together so I'm already excited to see what is happening in the next uh, weeks and months again. Uh, the news are full right now on EV related topics, which is just to, 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 to keep this in mind, which is completely different to the situation two, three, five years ago, when, so to say, e-mobility was a kind of a strange topic only some geeks have focused on, um, but that has completely changed. It's really impacting our daily life and my family, my friends who are doing completely different things than I'm doing, they are asking me more and more often, hey, which kind of EV model I now need to buy and how to install a wall box and things like that. And that's great to see that e-mobility e is now reaching our daily lives. That's great. And so let's let's join forces. I think, again, this is so important that we are not pushing only specific perspectives forward, but really find a way how we can, uh, how the whole market can, can grow by the support of all the stakeholders, all, all the players in the market. Yeah, and I'm uh, super excited about um, the role, I think, within this collaboration that technology has to play to make um, the process for electric vehicle owners to own an electric vehicle and to charge their vehicle as simple as possible. Um, that's in the immediate uh, short term, but I think over the longer term, you know, if we can continue to develop, to continue to collaborate with other uh, other people in the industry, I, I think that we can really help people cross the chasm from owning a petrol and diesel car to actually owning an electric car and then fully decarbonized transport. So I'm very optimistic about um, what the future can hold with collaborations in the industry.